just happened for a second. Oh, anyway, so I I got into good conspiracies years and years and years ago, and then finally got into flat Earth because I was uh, I'd ran out of things to do, and I looked into it just because it's like, well, it's stupid, but I'll look at it anyway. Why not? If you're older, once you get you know a certain age, I know you're really young, but once you get to a certain age, it's like eh, I better do things while I still can, you know, I'll, you know, cross them off my bucket list, as it were. And I looked at it and thought I could kill it. Everybody hates Flat Earth when they first get into it. And I thought I could kill it and ended up uh, nine months later making a video series about it. It's called Flat Earth Clues. And put it out on the internet and said, you know what? I don't think it's that crazy internet. Tell me what you think. And they came back and all sorts of people were you know, both positive and negative, but a lot of positive people. Can I ask, yeah, it's not crazy, and here's why. And they were giving me even more, way more information that I had even come up with. So there you go. Okay. Um, you said you looked into uh, other conspiracies as well. Yeah. So what yeah. makes this one different from uh, all the others? Um, what makes this one's different is it's positive, meaning just about every other conspiracy, and and you know, I'm sure a bunch are, you know, considered dark and sinister and we should all just whisper about them and, you know, the government's out to get us and, wait, did you hear that? You know, people looking over their shoulders, that that side of, sort of thing. And Flat Earth was really positive. It had a positive message to it, which is if it is enclosed and flat, uh, then it was built by someone. And that means it's deliberate, meaning you have a purpose here and that the universe may not be as big as you think. And you're here for a reason. And that's what resonated with a lot of people. That's why, uh, you know, conspiracies are generally high 80% male oriented. And there were a lot of women that got into this. And that was that was a big indicator for me. It's like, oh, okay, so this thing is positive. Because women don't like looking at negative things if they can help it. Oh, yeah, they, they like drama from time to time. But this wasn't that. This was a very, very positive thing. Okay. Uh, so, um, do you think flat Earth is about more than just believing that the Earth is flat? Do you think it's like a community? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, it is. It is. It's not just about the shape of the Earth. It's about what the universe is. Why are you here? You know, one of the fundamental questions we ask when we're all growing up. It's like, why am I here? And flat Earth goes a long way into exploring that, which is, well, at the very least, you have a lot better idea of it, if it was built or not. It wasn't part of some big bang accidental creation where you're this uh, tiny little rock flying through space at impossible speeds. It's it's deliberate. It's a very, very small system, a small and close system. So, yeah, it's it's not just about flat Earth. It's about faith. It's about uh, philosophy. It's about um, social dynamics. It's about all those things. It really, it it polarizes people. It polarizes countries uh, to where, you know, because no, very few people are on the fence about this. You're either on board with it or you're not. Very few people are like, ah, oh, flat earth, I could take it or leave it. Now, once you start getting into it, you either love it or you hate it. Okay. So from those past two questions, mm -hmm. uh, is it fair to say that, you think flat earth is more like uh, a religion rather than a conspiracy theory? It's both. I mean, we throw out a lot of those terms. Uh, I mean, I'm really surprised that over the last five years, flat earth has not been labeled as a cult. And I suppose the only reason it hasn't is because we don't really have uh, official churches or robes or chanting or, or a flat earth Bible or anything like that. Um, but there is, yeah, there's leaps of faith and, and, you know, do you believe, do you not believe? We throw out a lot of um, religious and pseudo-religious terms. So it is both. It is both. Uh, um, uh, a, I mean, the fact that we even use the word belief, it is a belief system that can automatically be tied to a religion in one way or the other. However, the five major religious houses of this world all have a stake in it. Uh, and since everybody has their own denomination, Flat Earth seems to encompass all of them. It's kind of its own universal church, in a way. Okay. Um, and like you said, uh, one of the big differences is that this one is mostly positive. Yeah. Um, but there's still like the idea that people are lying about the shape of the Earth, right? Well, it's positive, but the lie isn't something that was created by us. 
So with any other conspiracy, be it, I don't know, 9-11 or JFK or the Twin Towers or um, just about every major American war or anything like that, we were the ones that started the conspiracy and finished it to one way or the other. When it comes to Flat Earth, we had nothing to do with this. We didn't construct this thing in any way, shape or form. All we did was find it. And then we kept the secret. <clears throat> so, yeah, people are lying to keep the secret, but at the same time, they're doing it for the greater good. And I'm a big believer in that, in that the ends justify the means. So, yeah, sure, they, they're, they're lying, but at the same time, they're doing it because the public couldn't handle it. Much like this is the same thing with um, Roswell. Which is, you know, initially they let it out and then the media started freaking out and people started panicking and they backed away from it. It's like, no, the public isn't ready for it. And the public wasn't ready. In, you know, if you found out about the flat earth and I think our government did in about 1960, do you tell the general public? Do you let them know? And I, I'd be the first one to say, no, no, we weren't ready in 1960. Not even close. But we are now. So I think that's why it's being allowed to to move into all, all the different aspects of social media. Uh, I think we're being helped. We we didn't do this on accident. Uh, social media was promoting this thing behind the scenes for years. YouTube, <clears throat> excuse me, I, was, I had a big interview last night. Oh yeah, no problem. The um, YouTube was promoting us nonstop for the first three years, from 2015 until the middle of 2018. I mean, nonstop. We were the binge. We were the binge show on on YouTube. And then they backed off just because, well, we had saturated the market. Okay. So is that also one of the reasons you uh, took part in uh, the movie Behind the Curve? To put yourself uh, any, out? Uh, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer of any publicity is good publicity, uh, especially over here in the United States. Uh, media is you know, very, very sought after. And it doesn't matter if they... The producers have told me this for years, which is it doesn't matter whether you love or you hate a topic as long as you're talking about it. And so when I, I mean, I say yes to almost every show that I, I get on, any media that wants to ask me to talk about it. it, doesn't matter if the host attacks, it doesn't matter if they paint us in a bad light, they're talking about it. So for every, you know, 100 audience members that are out there, you know, how many do we get, do we expose to the topic? First off, we expose all hundred to, to the topic. And then out of those, how many are willing to look into it afterwards? And we found that that was the, the perfect example was behind the curve because I sat with studio audiences in different cities and, you know, they didn't know who I was and watched the process, which is the first 20 or 30 minutes. Nobody even thought the movie was real. They thought they were watching some piece of docufiction. And then it was like, wait a minute. There's something really big on the internet. I have no idea what it's about. And then they got they got sucked in. So at the very end, I mean, especially when we did Q and A sessions, lots of people stayed for for Q and As. And I guarantee that a lot of people, when they got home on the way home, they're tech, you know, they're they're looking it up on their phones. That is that exposure is priceless. Okay. And in the in that movie, and as well just now, uh, you said you get approached mostly po uh, positively, right? About uh, being a flatterer. Well, yeah, the trolls. I mean, there's always trolls. I mean, like I, I can't read the YouTube comment section because you know most of the people out there in the YouTube comment section are horrible. But everybody else that's contacted me directly via email and or phone has been um, very positive. Very okay. positive. So, um, do do you have any uh, experience or uh, stories about people that also believe in flatter that? Uh, get negatively affected by by their beliefs. So, when it comes to other people, yeah, oh yeah, there's tons of people that have had um, bad experiences when they've gotten into this. Uh, why not? I mean, you know, the people are very, very polarized. Even in, inside my own family, you know, there's some people that are for it, some people are against it, but most of the people just don't even want to let it be known that they're even discussing it because of the backlash uh 90 percent of our members for example are in the closet if you know what that term means yeah, yeah. uh meaning they are oh shoot hang on one second the cat wants it <laughs> oh yeah, yeah for sure no problem so 90 percent of our members are in the closet <clears throat> and it's because they're afraid of the backlash from friends or family or co-workers mostly co-workers you friends and family you can deal with but when it comes to coworkers, you got to go to work every day. Okay, and and why do you think people look so negatively on 
flat Earth because, as far as I know, it's not hurting anybody. Well, why it's not hurting anybody, right? Um, it's because of the conditioning. Uh, we it is the only conspiracy that we inadvertently debunk to children. Meaning, you know, you don't teach children about JFK or the Pearl Harbor or the Twin Towers or anything like that. But you do put a globe in their classroom. And that's very, very um, heavy conditioning if you leave it there for at least 12 years. You know, over here, you know, it's 12 years to get through high school. And that globe is in your classroom for years. It just sits there. Just sits there. That toy, that model. And <clears throat> To where, you know, even if you you don't even go to university afterwards, those those 12 years will put you in a defensive state. People get really, really polarized. I'll give you a great example um, of the conditioning. When I clicked on my first Flat Earth video, the first one I ever watched, which was a guy over in um, Europe somewhere, and I think he was Germany, actually. And when I clicked on it, I immediately got embarrassed. I actually got flushed. And I was really surprised. I caught myself. It's like, wow, why, why am I getting this physical reaction to this? I mean, you know, I, I'm older. I've been around since the internet was new. The, uh, there's a lot of weird things on the internet. Nothing has really embarrassed me for, for years and years. I mean, we've all been there. And, but this did. And that's because of the conditioning. We are told it's a globe, it's a globe, it's a globe, it's a globe for years and years and years. And you'd be amazed. Like, watch any television show, watch any movie. It's in the background. Somewhere in the set, I, almost every television show that's that's produced, almost every movie has a globe on a set somewhere, which is really suspicious. So when you are in introduced to the flat earth, it is an affront to it, it's it's offensive to people at a subconscious level. It's almost like telling them when they're like 30 years old that they're adopted because it goes back that far. You know, you can tell somebody, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm pretty sure you're adopted. And they're not going to believe you. They're like, get out of here, right? And then all of a sudden, they start, you know, it, it, they're, they're, they're in denial. They, they ignore it. They ignore it. And then for a split second, they go, wait a minute. I remember these weird conversations when I was growing up with my parents. Wait, who are these other people? And it, it kind of, the rip, it ripples back in time. You know, you're talking about years worth of conditioning you're trying to undo. That's why people get upset. Right. So do you think there's uh, anything out there that's on about the same level as this? No. Well, with the exception of uh, the existence of God and potentially other civilizations, the, the, the revealing of that. I mean, I don't think, for example, that we were the only civilization to ever live on the surface of this world. Not, not even close. So, I mean, there's there's remnants of older civilizations that predate our history all over the place. And that would be a very, very big thing. But the shape of the world is, I mean, it functions on multiple levels. I mean, the only, really, the only thing bigger than that would be who built it. That's that's the only thing bigger, because then it goes into the whole creator issue. Okay. Um, and is there anything that could happen that would make you stop believing in flat earth? Oh, anything you could do to to stop me from believing in flat Earth? Um, yeah, yeah. There's two things you could do. Um, the first thing would be put a 4K camera on a rocket. You don't even have to put me in space. Put a 4K camera on a rocket, point it down towards the launch pad, uh, put it on put it on the capsule, and let that rocket go into orbit and leave orbit and transmit the data back and let us let us view it. It's never happened in the history of space travel, which is stunning considering how many things have been out there, you know, for, for years and years. Uh, you know, why, why, are, why is there no footage, uh, unedited footage of a rocket leaving the pad where the Earth forms into a globe? That would be the first thing. The, but that's tough to do. You know, you're going to have to find a space agency that would allow you to do it, and they're not going to. The only other thing would be the spacesuit test, which is, and it's a challenge I put out there for years, which is find me a spacesuit, any spacesuit, no, not, not a tethered spacesuit, a self-contained backpack like they used on the moon in the 60s, anything from the 60s up until now, find me one of those spacesuits, loan it to me, let me wear it, put me in a vacuum chamber, pull the switch, tell me what happens, tell me how I don't die. Uh, because a spacesuit defies thermal dynamics. It defies physics. Physics says straight up that pressure cannot exist to 
no pressure without a barrier, right? It's why when you blow a balloon up with your hand and you let it go a million times in a row, it's just going to fly off because the pressure is going to equalize. And that, that, that there's nothing in the spacesuit to counter that. It, a spacesuit is basically just a very stiff balloon. So why doesn't it act like a balloon when it's in a vacuum chamber? It's fully articulated. Your arms can bend, your knees can bend, your fingers, you can manipulate electronics with it. How does that happen? Any other object, any other soft object in a vacuum chamber immediately expands and then detonates. So how does that happen with a spacesuit? It was brilliant. It was a brilliant thing. They, when it came to the moon mission, <clears throat> excuse me, what they said was somebody, somebody just came up with a brilliant idea. It's like, wait, the average person, I mean, 90% of the public doesn't understand physics at all. So all we have to do is put people in a soft spacesuit, put them on television, they'll believe it. It is one of those weird things about media that uh, has stayed consistent ever since television was created, even radio, but on television especially. And that is, if it is reported on the news, on television, it is absolutely true. No one, no one questions it. It's like, it's like oh, it's got to be objective. Nobody has any ulterior motives. No one would ever lie to us about anything, ever. And I've talked to a lot of people along those lines. It's like, come on, you know full well there's conspiracies in business and politics and uh, sports and entertainment and even journalism and science. There are conspiracies everywhere. But there's a lot. Of, it's just a question of what you're willing to look at. And most people don't want to look at them. They like their life. They like their comfort zone. They don't want to go outside of it. They don't even want to hear it. It's like, don't tell me about it. I've got my own problems. So there you go. Okay. And like about a guesstimation, like how many people do you think uh, look at it the same way you do? Oh, in millions. Flattered? Millions, millions of people are into flat earth. I've, I've talked to them. I there's, Again, 90% of our, our audience is in the closet. They, uh, they don't want to, um, uh, they just don't want to talk about it. But I've, there are, oh, what's it? There's, there's so many cool little examples I could give you, but the the short version is millions. They're, yeah, they're I, mean, I mean, within flat earth, how many people uh, could be convinced that they are not right, or that they? Oh, how how least... many people could you convince that are in flat earth that to to leave flat earth? Yeah, almost almost none. We in fact that's that's a good question. Um, we have a ninety nine percent retention rate. Meaning once you get into flat earth, you don't leave it. And the reason is because we don't convince you of it, flat earth. You convince yourself. We just put the seed in you. We say, you know what? Do your own research. Try to prove the globe like me and like everybody else. And for me, it took a lot longer. But And so people was like, oh, okay, I can prove the globe. And so you go into it and you sort of prove it. But then there's these loose ends. And there's more loose ends. And the deeper you go, the more loose ends there are until eventually you just tear down the globe yourself. And so when you kind of, it's kind of like the matrix. When, if you try to go back to the globe, how can you do it? How can you put it back together again? You can't. Now you can walk away from flat earth and lots of people have like, you know, they've stopped making content because it's like, oh, I've got my own life to deal with, but they never go back to the globe, including me. How could I? Okay. So, so would you say you are, Part of that one percent that that would leave if proven otherwise. Oh no 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 no! If you could come up with proof, sure. Oh no no no! I like with anything. No no no! If uh, the whole flat Earth community would be destroyed if you could actually come up with proof. But that, the thing is, everybody that gets into flat Earth is looking for it already. Nobody goes into flat Earth trying to believe in flat Earth. They're trying to prove the globe, and when they can't it's it's the old court thing. I don't know what your court systems are like over there. But for, for us, it's about reason. A lot of times it's about reasonable doubt. Can I prove to you that it's, that it's flat? Nope. Can't prove it. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have to go is some sort of flat earth model? Yeah, I can do that all day long. And that, and you say, well, that's not enough. I was like, well, it is for the majority of the people. A lot of scientists would be like, nope, nope, we need absolute proof. It's like, yeah, well, you are outnumbered by the general population of about a thousand to one. And that's where our strength comes in. It's people, you know, they convince themselves that it's flat because they, they can't prove the globe anymore in a court of law, you know, their own court of law. And that's it. Okay. So uh, what does it say about like the experiments they performed in uh in the documentary because they showed multiple experiments right and right 
Right, right. Okay, first off, the power of editing. You got to remember that the producers, we didn't produce, we didn't make that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just we were just in it. The producers hated Flat Earth by the end. In fact, they couldn't even have made the movie had they been Flat Earthers. Every group that they went to, every film festival, every meeting, the first question they were asked was, are you guys Flat Earthers? And they said no, and they weren't. But And the, the big reason why they weren't is they were afraid that we were going to wreck the future. It was weird, um, you know, especially when the um, the kids. It's like you know, once they saw us, that you know, we we had younger people that were getting into this. People way younger than you, uh, they were getting into flat Earth. They were they were really worried. It's like you're you're destroying science. You're destroying all this stuff. So when it came to the experiments, oh god, they just butchered us. Just just killed us in editing. Uh, but to be fair, not all of it was their fault. Some of it was our fault. Uh, so like but with Bob and the gyroscope, most people didn't even understand what the gyroscope meant anyway. For me, it was like, okay, 15 degree motion per hour, right? Is it happening in the sky? Is, is the sky moving or, are we, or, or is, the, is the earth moving? Well, we say it's the sky and science says it's the earth. It's, it's, it's a stalemate on that one. But when it come, came to the laser experiment, that was Jaron's fault. Absolutely, there were two. He did two runs at it. He never. We didn't. We didn't know for months that he didn't even look at the site during the daytime. He just went live the first time. He's like, "Wait, you didn't do a dry run? You just took these guys out to a place you thought was flat, and then you shot the laser over a place you thought was flat because Google Earth seemed to indicate it might be flat." He ne he never even practiced it, and so when he finally went out there two months later. During the middle of the day, he had never gone out in daylight. He realized he never had line of sight. He didn't care. You know, the producers didn't care, though, because they wanted to paint us in a, in a bad light. And they took the shot at the end, and it was, a, it was a good ending for the general public because they wanted that. They wanted to feel safe. The reason why the movie did as well as it did and trended for as long as it did is because it made audiences feel safe. It wasn't a flat earth propaganda piece. It was flat earth, flat earth, scientist, flat earth, flat earth, psychiatrist, flat earth, flat earth, astronaut type stuff. So people, I, and I watched them in the audience. I sat right next to them. They're like, okay, okay, it's safe. It's good. It's good. I'm not freaking out because they didn't want to believe it. And, but by the end, a hundred minutes later, they, they were, had a lot of questions. Okay. <clears throat> um, let me just see. All right. Um. Uh, do you think people, or some people at least, uh, well, I don't, it's not really the right wording, but I hope you get what I mean. What? Do you think people use Flat Earth as like a, a gateway drug into uh, more extreme conspiracy theories? Uh, yes and no. Is Flat Earth a, a gateway conspiracy drug? Um, flat Earth is the highest level of conspiracy drug, so it kind of works in reverse. It's not a gateway, but it's it's more of an umbrella. So once you get into Flat Earth, if you if you if you're fully invested in it, you all of a sudden realize that wait a minute, if Flat Earth is possible, then anything is possible. Then you start revisiting all the smaller conspiracies, uh, because why wouldn't you? You know, if you could lie about something that big, you could lie about anything. And that's very, very true. You, you can lie about anything. It's just media. It's just spinning a story and repeating it over and over until the rumor mill takes it. So, yeah. Yeah, that is one of the weird side effects of, of Flat Earth is that once you're into it, you're into all other conspiracies simultaneously. In fact, it's tough for me. And I'm a, I'm a great example of this. I can't condemn any other conspiracies now because I'm into Flat Earth. Meaning... I used to be able to, uh, you know, like if somebody came up to me and, and said, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm pretty sure that Elvis is still alive and he had Bigfoot's baby. I you know, beforehand, I'd be like, yeah, get out of here. Right. But now, since I'm in the flat earth, it's like, yeah, you know what? I'll give you a couple minutes. What do you got? And we talk about it, you know, or whatever, whatever the concept is. I can't shoot it down. It'd be hypocritical for me to do so. So so you think. um Believing in flat earth or just conspiracy in general uh, would make you more open-minded towards other ideas that might seem outlandish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, flat earth is, is if you can get your head around the whole flat earth concept, then you are open-minded to anything. 
it is it is the most polarizing open minded thing ever. Uh, once you're into it, you are totally open minded to any concept. Uh, you, you you may have personal beliefs, your personal biases towards you know a few things, political and non political, but you are willing to. And I've seen it, people. You know, and you're way more um, willing to entertain the ideas, as it were. Okay. And a uh, completely different note. Um, why do you think, uh, like, from I don't know the exact years, but like uh, within the like 1500s, yeah, like and anywhere before that, people believed the Earth was flat. Yeah. Then people started believing the Earth was round. Yep. Why do you think that? Uh, oh, why did like, why did all of a sudden we, why did we go to the globe model? Yeah. I talked about this in the clues, and I, I don't know if you watched it, but I think it was introduced by whoever built this place. Meaning, the you're absolutely right. Sooner or later, what was because people did every culture believed that the Earth was not just flat. We were living in some sort of enclosed system, this snow globe, and then it changed not quickly, you know, because the things moved a lot slower 500 years ago, and. But I think it was introduced because sooner or later, if you don't do that, when technology reaches a certain level, people are going to try to find it, which is exactly what we did anyway at, at, this, at, uh, at the government levels. So because remember, uh, even, if, even, even if you had a flat earth map, let's say you're the king of France in um, 1600, right? And, and you had a flat earth map and nobody else knew. Everyone else was thinking it was a globe, right? What are you going to do with it? You had wooden ships and horses. That was the limit of your technology. It wasn't until the internal combustion engine was created that we were able to do really anything. And that was, you know, and even then after it took, it took us a while to get pressurized aircraft. And then we could go explore the fringes of things. But if the flat earth map was still considered the true map, we would have pushed harder. We would have pushed harder in the second that internal combustion engine, everyone would have started exploring those areas. So you introduce, you, it, was, it was a brilliant thing, which is you, you tell people there is no wall, there is no fence, because you're on a globe. You can go round and round and you're, you're never going to find it. And that took out the motivation of most explorers. It's like, oh, okay, well, we explored everything. You just told them that and it worked. Okay. Um, and on a, this might, may seem weird, but do you think Elon Musk or something like that could be like the polarization filter for flat earth because elon musk think, is, yeah yeah he's such a weird example i can't quite figure him out because he uh, the, one he's a, because he's a billionaire he's allowed to say anything to the media and they'll just print it but he makes the most outlandish claims i talked about this in um the, the last book i wrote which is like every every claim he's ever said he was going to do, he never did, and and yet and you know putting that convertible in space, that red convertible in space, was just the most outlandish thing ever. And I've talked to producers that know it was absolutely fake. You know, it's got production errors all over it. But I, I go, so but why'd you air it? It's like, well, it's good TV, it's good television, it's interesting. I go, but it's not real. It's like, eh, public's not going to know. It's like, oh, you guys are killing me. Um, Elon Musk is, is very, very polarizing in his own right. Uh, he doesn't like us. He said on air that, you know, he, he didn't, he, he absolutely, he didn't even think it was a real thing. He, he just didn't pay attention. I mean, he's got other things to, to worry about. Uh, but he, it, every time he does a space thing, it, it just helps us because the production values for any space mission nowadays are terrible. That whole thing where they put up four astronauts, supposedly in the dragon, to the ISS, pff, whatever. It, by the way, it, it, it's stunning to me how people don't understand how business competition works. NASA is a government organization. Why are they working with SpaceX, a private firm? They are direct competition. Why are they using their, own, their, their, their rocket pads? Why are you going to their space station? It would literally undermine the funding for NASA. If they're successful, why would you allow this to happen? And no one questions it. It's it's that part is smart. Okay. Um, but what I uh, was more referring to was, do you think like 
uh, what do you call it, commercial air flight, do you think that will put a definitive end to either globe or flat Earth? Commercial air flight, like space flight? Yeah, yeah, spi- space, no. uh, space flight. Good Lord, no, 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 the public's not going anywhere. Oh, I could, I could spend a day talking about this, but I won't. Um, look, he said, I'll give you a perfect example. He said, I was, I was up in Canada when I saw this news, has, news headline. At the beginning of 2017, he said he was going to send two people around the moon as tourists. Just take two random people, take them around the moon, rich people, of course, um, in the middle of 2018. He had no capsule. He had no rocket. He had no, no pilots. It's like, w- 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 how are you doing this? This is the most aggressive tam- timeline I've ever heard. Never happened. Never happened. We've had every president over here from since Reagan, right? Reagan, George Bush Sr., the Clintons, George Bush Jr., uh, Obama, Trump. They've all said the same thing. We're committed to going back to the moon. We're going to go back to the moon. They have kicked that can down the road for 50 years. We haven't. Nobody supposedly has even claimed to go back to the moon in, since 1972. So it, it was like, by the way, since the Americans went, why didn't anybody else go? Why has no other person supposedly set foot on the moon? There'd be, what, China? They'd have a huge vested interest of doing that. Russia? They just gave up the space race. You remember the whole space race thing? It's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're neck and neck. And then all of a sudden, America supposedly gets there and Russia just quits? Nope. That, we're just packing it up. We're done. It's like, what are you talking about? That, that doesn't happen ever. Uh, so, yeah, when I don't care who claims it, whether it's SpaceX or, or Virgin Galactic or Blue Horizon, nobody's going. It's like you want to say you want to say you went to the space station. Yeah, right. Whatever. Uh, nobody's going. To, why? Why? Why not the moon? Well, why? You know why? In fact, I'll give you another quick example. We were doing television shows in the '70s that assumed that by the '90s we would already have a moon base. There was a wonderful British television show called Space 1999, and it was very realistic in that it's like, oh yeah, we would absolutely have a moon colony, no problem whatsoever. Nothing. No one's ever been there. Elon's not going. Branson's not going. Bezos is not going. Nobody's going anywhere. They never will. They just kick the can down the road. They keep moving the timelines. It's like, oh, we'll go. I've I've heard this. I'm older. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll be there by 1998. We'll be there by 2002, 2012, 2015, 2018. Now they're saying 2024. It's like, nope, no one's going. Nope. So so you don't, so you think that uh, space flight or at least that far out is just not possible or no. not real. No, no, it's not real and they will never let the general public go because they can't keep a secret. The general public the member everybody that's been on the ISS has been um, military. They're they're all military people. All the astronauts with the exception of the, some of the cha- the Challenger disaster, which is a whole other thing, they're all military. In fact, most of the people that have claimed to even been in space at all were not just military, they were and I don't know if you know military ranks, they're like colonels or higher. These are these are ranking officers and you know, people that can keep secrets. And it's like, look, they're soldiers. They're paid to keep secrets. That's why you send them to space. The general public sells tickets to general public going to space. They'd never be able to keep a secret. Never. So, never. So what and, about- and the secret they would keep is they never went anywhere. They just sat in an Air Force base, which is why they're you're never going to sell tickets. So do you think that this is for all space agencies around the world? All space agencies are absolutely crap. However, that you're, because your, your follow-up question might be, how can all those people keep a secret? They don't have to. 99% of the people that work for NASA don't know anything. They build fuel systems. They polish this. They clean the floors. They build, you know, they build things. They turn wrenches. That's all they do. But the only people that need to know anything are the telemetry guys. Even the astronauts, you don't have to tell them the whole story, only that they're faking something. You don't even have to tell them why. Uh, but the only thing guys that need to know are telemetry guys, which means the guys that run the numbers that say, oh, okay, once this rocket gets out of range, here's where it is. That has to be completely fabricated. That's just software. So you don't need that many guys. And of course, whoever their bosses are. So very, very few people have to know. But so yes, every space agency that's ever done anything at the highest levels is just faking it. it. They're money machines. Why wouldn't you fake it? But they can only go so far, which is why, by the way, there's certain things that are off limits. Why China don't have men walking around the moon or Russia never went back to kick over the American flag. 
I mean, supposedly there's six countries out there that have launch capability, which brings into a whole other thing. Israel supposedly sent a probe to the moon last year. If you went on Wiki and you you look up countries with launch capabilities, Israel wasn't even on there. But one day it's like, oh yeah, by the way, our probe's going to get to the moon. It's like, what probe? Where'd that come from? And then it crashed, of course. So there, there wouldn't be any evidence of it. It's like, well, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. And NASA advisors were all throughout that control panel. It wasn't an Israel thing. It was a NASA thing just to see what social media would do if they would buy it. So no, every space agency is an utter sham. All of it. Okay. So, okay. But do you think that would be a third way of convincing people that the Earth is either one of the two is by... Having an actual space launch where yeah. just regular people could go? Sure, sure, sure. It, but you have to have camera footage of it. That's why there's so many things that are missing. There, the, And I, again, I talked about this in the clues, and I'm surprised they didn't put it in the documentary. One of the big things is no astronaut has taken a camera and just spun around in a complete circle with the camera running. How, how does that not happen? It's because you don't want to show any of the production techniques. That's why the interior footage of all the ISS stuff is just horrible production value. Why on the moon the camera didn't spin around? It's because it was on a sound stage. Um, it is there's there's no there's nothing they can do. There's only so far because they're scared. the the problem The problem with the the stuff they they're they're doing now is that social media, the detection capabilities of the general public has caught up to a certain level to where unless their productions are absolutely perfect, which they never are, uh, they're going to get found out. Um, it's why we have things, and I don't know if you've ever been to them, like moviemistakes.com. Like, the bigger the movie, the more mistakes there are. Because, you know, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in production. But if a coffee cup moves from here to here without the character moving it, someone's going to note of it. The internet misses nothing. And they're scared of doing that in um, in any sort of real-time production when it comes to space. It's why, by the way, um, the the early examples, why there were never any stars shown from the moon and say oh it's exposure settings it's a camera setting it's like okay so fine get one roll of film and shoot the exposure to to do it not there isn't a single picture from the moon from any camera ever taken that showed any stars ever and the reason very very simple is because the star constellations which is basically just a giant clock system is so easily predictable that if the stars were out of place in any way shape or form somebody would find it they say, hey, it says it's 2 a.m. there, but the belt of Orion's over there, and it should be behind them, and blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Game over. So the, that's why they, they can't do it. They have a really, really tough time trying to fake stuff. They're scared, of, which is why. A, a, a quick one. I, I don't know how much time you have. But which is um, the blue marble shot. Look this up. This is not secret information. The first blue marble shot ever taken of the Earth, the full disk of the Earth, was taken in um, 1972 during Apollo 17 the last mission before the Americans quit. It's like, wow, you never took any from Apollo 8 through Apollo 16, never took a full disc shot of the Earth. Nope, took it on the way home the 17th, and then we shut it down. You know when the next blue marble shot was taken? Summer of 2015. 43 years. That's all the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010, halfway to 2020. No one took a full disc picture of the Earth from anywhere. And then all of a sudden they started coming out because we started coming out? No, not, not buying it. Not for a second. Okay. Um, do you think people that believe in flat Earth are more for or against uh, the idea of uh, what's it called uh, climate change and fighting it? Uh, that, ver that, that varies with climate change because climate change it's one of those pseudo conspiracies. Because you don't know, I mean, the ramifications of it, you don't know. I, I can give you my opinion on it, and I've, I've been very vocal about it, which is, do I believe in climate change? Yes, I do. But I believe in it for a very different reason, and that is because if we are in some sort of pressurized and closed system, it makes a lot more sense. Meaning, um, you've heard the term greenhouse gases. Doesn't greenhouse gases make more sense if it's an actual enclosed greenhouse? Because the the other part of it never made never made sense again defies thermodynamics, which is when the fluoral carbons and you know and all the all the things float up to the certain part of the the atmosphere and it gets to where our atmosphere meets space. 
what what happens there exactly? Because that goes against thermodynamics. If you have vacuum and you have an atmosphere, the vacuum will absolutely shred whatever is the atmosphere. It's instant. We shouldn't even be breathing right now if it is what they defined. And I've never had a scientist being able to explain to me what exactly happens. What happens at the bleeding edge of space? And if you think I'm oversimplifying it, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, let's say there's a second floor, whatever's above you in your ceiling. Let's say you turn that into a vacuum chamber. And you can look these up online. This is not tough to do. And you have a vacuum chamber above you and you pull the valve, right? What happens? It's not like the movies. It is instant. It is violent. And the pressure equalizes. All the air in your room goes upstairs. It equalizes just that fast, it, you know, within a split second. And the question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room instead of sending it upstairs? Well, because the vacuum force is much, much stronger. It, vacuum will win every single time. So the question is, when you go outside, why is the atmosphere still here? And you'll say, and, and the, the, your response will be the same as everybody else. Well, gravity. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room? That gravity? The exact same gravity right over there? No one has an answer to it. So, yeah, greenhouse gases, it only works. Greenhouse gases, the climate change only works in a pressurized system. That's the only way it works. We're in a terrarium. And yes, humankind, you know, you burn every car is just, unless it's electric, is just a little furnace. In fact, it's not even a little furnace. It's a big furnace. It's more powerful than the furnace you have in a, in a home. And we've got a billion of those things running constantly at any given time during the day. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen? Okay, so if anything, um, like flat earth isn't hurting anyone, right? No. No, but well, except they... for except for astrophysics and astronomy, <laughs> that's the only thing it's hurting. Yeah. Okay. So, but if people, in general, uh, that believe in, uh, if people that believe in flat Earth generally also believe that climate change is real, yeah, uh, would you say that it is uh, a net positive for people to believe uh, in flat Earth? Well, it is. I mean, again, I've I've gotten got mixed feelings because even though I believe in climate change, there's no way you're going to stop it. Um, you, if you try to shut down the industries that created the climate change, then our civilization just implodes. There's this we we've established too many things that are tied to these industries that create the the issues. We, I mean, hell, the cars alone. You basically what you going to tell people to stop driving. Well, how, how's that going to work? People are lazy. People, you know, in fact, we we wouldn't even be speaking right now if we didn't have the internal combustion engine. So it's kind of this weird paradox. Um, yeah, everyone wants the world to be a better, cleaner, more wonderful place. But that's not the civilization we created. I'm not trying to be negative in any way. I'm just saying, look, that's just the way it happened. We, we've gone too far. We, you try to reel it back now, you can reel it back, but you're going to have to take the population down to... 10% of what it is now and that's not fun really at all yeah. so except for that do you, do you think realistically uh, the end of the world is just inevitable not the end of the world but what's the song the end of the world as we know it uh, the the end the, the decline of our civilization I think every oh, yeah, civilization yeah. has their run and we've had 5,000 years, and w in the last 500 years, we, we tend to take things too far. Human beings don't, I'll, I'll use a line from the Matrix, which kind of sums it up, which is, you know, every other life form on this planet, or we'll say mammals, because that's from the movie, every other mammal on this planet develops a natural equilibrium with its surrounding environment, but human beings do not. They just multiply and multiply and consume resources until they run out of resources and then they move to another area. Well, okay, that's a problem because there's only so many resources. And that's and I talked about this in a rant recently. Even even the oil side of things. People don't believe in peak oil. It's like, look, there's only so much oil that will support certain countries and eventually they're going to fight over it. We've been doing this secretly and some not so secretly for decades. So, uh, yeah, our civilization is going to go into decline. 
Do I think it'll absolutely implode to where there's nothing left? Eh, I don't know. It's hard to say how, how it's going to um, finally end up. But but we absolutely can't keep doing what we're doing because it's it's unsustainable. And every scientist at least agrees on that point. You you can't you it, it, there is no balance. We we don't know when to pull back. We consume, we consume, we consume. That's what we do. And empires are built on um, reproduction and uh, and you know expanding things. And everybody wants to rule the world. Nobody wants to give in. So there's got to be a breaking point. And that's how I think we are right now. Okay. Um, I think for now I'm out of questions. Okay. Uh, uh, if I happen to wonder something, I'll send you a message if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. As soon as you hit end, as soon as you hang up the call, it will build the video for you over in the chat box. Okay. Um, as soon as you hit record on your side, you killed my audio recording on this side, so that's fine. But oh, it should yeah. work just fine. So again, it'll take maybe a couple minutes because we were running for 50 minutes. But when it's done, it'll just be it'll be in your chat box. Okay, okay great. Thanks. All right. All right. Hey, yes. have a good one. Yeah, you too. See ya.